The ML Sports Platter back with you. It is Derby Week, and we bring in my man, Batavia Downs Gaming and Western OTB Marketing Director Ryan Hassenauer to talk about it. He's also a member of Bill's Mafia. He gets all dressed up for the Derby, so you got to go check him out on social media, uh, on X, and, and check out what outfit he's got in store. I, I would actually just take the polo shirt he's got on right now. <laughs> the nice pink polo, the Nike with a logo. Hey, Welcome back, man. This is our first video. Now we're ready to roll Triple Crown. I appreciate your guys' support, and thanks for a couple minutes, brother. Absolutely, man. You know, we're getting ready for the Derby. It's been crazy. Recording stuff, getting things together with uh, Nick the Railbird and Don Hoover, who's the head of our racing here on site. Uh, you know, Sean Chiano, uh, who's our, our VP of Operations, who used to be work for the OTBs with us. Everyone's got a horse, right? And everyone's got an idea of what they think is going to happen. Uh, Mike, last year, I was fortunate enough for the first time in 17 years to pick a winner that wasn't the favorite. You know, sometimes you're like, I picked the winner. And it's just like, yeah, you and everybody else, man, that's a, that's the favorite. But last year I did pick Mage. I, I really liked Mage. And then once, uh, and I can't even remember his name, but when the horse that beat him in his prep race ended up getting scratched for the Derby, uh, I did uh, say, you know what? I think Mage is my guy. And, and he ended up winning. So that was a big deal. Yeah, I remember you uh, picking them right on my show. So yeah. uh, that was pretty cool stuff. Speaking of favorites and top horses, all this, here's a horse by the name of Just a Touch in there at the eighth spot that, I, I you know, dad Dad's pretty successful and, and you got a pretty good trainer, pretty good jockey. Uh, yeah. Give me, you know, give me your just overall, you know, top horses, favorites, however you want to go. And I'm assuming Just a Touch is in the mix for you, correct? He is. You know, one of the th interesting things, Mike, and you get better at everything you do, right? Whether it's podcasting, whether it's being the, the director of marketing someplace, eventually you just kind of start to pick up on things. You just get better at your job. And I think the same thing goes with handicapping these races. And one thing that I've noticed this year for the first time ever, and there might be people watching this being like, I discovered that and figured that out years ago. But hey, listen, I'm still an amateur uh, guy when it comes to predicting these races is trying to figure out like how the race is going to go, meaning how is it going to go early in the first minute? Are the fractions going to be fast or the fractions going to be slow? The two favorites here today are well on Saturday, Fierceness the 17 and two Sierra Leone. They are very different horses. The 17 Fierceness, he's going to want to go wire to wire. He might try to maybe not lead, but definitely be right there at the front and just stay at the front and then make his move in towards the end. Whereas the two Sierra Leone, he's going to hang back as a true stalker closer, and then he's going to try to pick up horses at the end. But, Mike, that, that gets crazy because what's going to happen is if the fractions are fast at the beginning, that means those horses on the lead are going to get tired, they're going to fade, and then here come the closers and the stalkers to do it. If the horses that go out to the front can slow the pace down a little bit and not make it too fast, they're going to have enough in the gas tank when we get to the top of the stretch and they might win, go wire to wire and win this race. So it's really interesting when I take a look at my bets and how I decide, I think the race is going to go. And, and quite frankly, you can bet either way. You can make a couple of super factors and trifecta bets where you're like, I think the race is going to have fast early fractions, which means the closers are going to have a great day. Here's that bet for that. Then you have a separate bet that says, Hey, this is what I think is going to happen if the early fractions are slow and those front runners get to stay out front and listen, the two and the 17 are both great horses. So yeah. I'm going to include them in all my bets anyway, but at the same time, it really took me until this year to say, wow, you know, maybe I need to make different bets based on how I think the race is going to go. And then of course it's 50% chance of rain. Who knows if it rains, what's going to happen. So there's a lot of different factors and variables to look at. Ryan lumping yeah. me into people get better at what they do. I, I, it's questionable for me. They're, they're just, I mean, I appreciate you lumping me sure. in there. By the way, my prune head was covering which way do I have to go here? See the pharaoh on the back wall there? Yes. Oh, yeah. I got the pharaoh on my wall as well right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah right there. I got that. Yeah, we got I actually was able to get one of these is a $2 win bet from here at OTB. The other one is an actual $2 win bet from Belmont that day. Oh, I found wow, a wow. guy and I got one and I got it framed. It's here in my office for all time. What a what a day that was, man. It was a great one of day. the biggest <laughs> regrets in my life was I got asked to go to the Belmont and it was a big weekend with a couple buddies of mine and I didn't go because oh. I, had, I had a radio remote at a client's place where like nobody showed up oh. and I stayed because, you know, true to sales rep, it's my client. I wanted to, yeah. I missed, you know, a couple Angel Yanks games. Didn't see Mike Trout play, although he's always injured anyway. Hurt again. Hurt again. Um, and, and, and then I missed the Belmont. I was like, you got to be kidding me. So later on, I did see Justify win it, although I know 
later on, you know, the tainted thing. And I, I know that some people question it and all the rest. I mean, I still think he won it, but yeah. I will say I was glad that I went out to Saratoga to see American Pharaoh. Mm-hmm. I went to the Friday, you know, that just the, the exercise ride where 20,000 showed up. I knew Pharaoh was going to lose because that's Saratoga with, uh, you know, with how it goes with the graveyard. Yes, but, the, the graveyard. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't see Pharaoh at the Belmont. I was so mad, but I went to Toga, and then I got that Belmont canvas uh, at Toga that weekend when I saw American Pharaoh. Just, just to be in the presence of a horse like that was unbelievable and justified, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, you know, uh, I've gone to Saratoga just once myself. I went uh, pre-pandemic. My dad lives out there about 15 minute walk from the track. And uh, we went on just a random Thursday. And it, if you're watching this, you need to make time this summer to go out to Saratoga because it's just like stepping back in time. Like you, you walk in there and people are excited about horse racing. I mean, we'll be frank, horse racing is in a tough spot right now. You know, yeah. we're doing a how to bet event this week to try to get people excited about, you know, the Derby. But it's it's a it's a lost art, the ability to read a program and to kind of take a look at these horses and figure things out. But when you're at Saratoga in the summer and it doesn't matter what day of the week it is, you get to watch them walk those horses through the paddock, walk it through the crowd in that special spot that they got. You get to see the horses as they go out on the track. The, the the dirt is never more brown. The grass is never more green than when you're looking at a, at a racetrack that's as well-groomed and with as much storied history as Saratoga. So I'm looking forward to hopefully maybe getting back there at some point. Of course, the Belmont Stakes this year is at Saratoga yes. because Belmont is undergoing some uh, some renovations there. So, so yeah, so I, I'm excited about this race, and so we'll kind of get into it here. So the, the 17 Fierceness, uh, he is the favorite. John Velasquez on the back, just a, an amazing jockey with two or three derby wins. Todd Pletcher, you know, with Bob Baffert not being around, Todd Pletcher, probably the best uh, trainer uh, that's around. Again, I said he's going to press the pace. He's going to want to be near the front. He's going to want those slow early fractions so he can stay up there. He was also anointed as you know, maybe the Derby favorite because he did win uh, the BC Juvenile back in November there. And, he, of course, he won the Florida Derby, so he won his prep race as well. Um, the last quest has been on his back. Now, we did have a scratch, uh, the nine scratch in Sino. Uh, so he's still the 17 horse, but he moves down to post 16, if you will. You know, you're still betting on the 17 if you want to bet on him. Uh, but the big knock was that no horse has ever won from the 17 post. So I don't know if that still holds true when they're actually breaking from the 16 post, but that's a that's another thing for another day. Uh, the two horse, of course, is somebody everybody's talking about. That's Sierra Leone with Howard Gaffleone in the back and uh, Chad Brown. He's the closer. He's going to want the fast early fraction so he can close late. He also was uh, the, the leader for uh, the co-leader for points. You know, they go to a point system now to determine whether you're eligible for the Derby. Um, he draws a tough number two spot because remember, you get pinched on that rail. So you got to be careful. Uh, he's got four starts and three wins in his lifetime. And he won the Toyota Bluegrass Stakes in which he defeated the horse that had defeated him in his only other uh, non-winning race that he had started. So he avenged his loss on his, his revenge tour to try to kind of do what he's going to do. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a couple horses that I'm definitely keep an eye on. Yeah. The number six horse is Just Steel, who, oh, by the way, also has a dad named Justify. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the six and the eight both have Justify as their dads. D-Wayne um, Lucas, baby. D-Wayne Lucas, Hall of Famer there, trainer. <laughs> now, the interesting thing about Just Steel is, is if you look at the, the program, which, of course, are going to be free at every OTB branch uh, on Derby Day and the day before, because, of course, on Friday we have the uh, – the pre-wagering he came in second in the arkansas derby and you can see that he had the post number eight went in fourth and then slowly kind of got his way up there to the point where he was two lengths off the leader when he came second at the end of the race but the leader in that race Muth, is a baffert horse and he's not here so for all intents and purposes he finished best out of all the horses that are here to they're going to be there on uh on on saturday at uh, churchill for this race and he's got monster speed figures and i just i i gotta use number six just steal in uh in my bets we talked about the number eight just touched on it real quick just a touch uh again the second in the bluegrass stakes behind sierra leone who's one of the favorites um the only thing i'm a little bit worried about with this horse is whether he can go the distance right. obviously that race was a mile and an eighth this is a mile and a quarter so a little bit longer but again you know anything can happen on derby day with traffic and horses you know getting boxed out and whatever else so justify or excuse me just a touch the son of justify will want to probably do the same thing as sierra leone and stay near the front and then figure out whether or not he's going to, um, you know, make a move there at some point. Uh, I like the number three horse, Mystic Dan, another Arkansas Derby horse. Um, this horse has great speed figures as well, and he did um, 
do well in a on a muddy track. I want to use the three probably in third and fourth in my supers and my tries, but I'm not going to probably use them for first or second unless it rains. Like if it rains, you're going to have to use Mystic Dan because he's the only horse I think that's got any sort of a history of doing well on a muddy track besides the number 12 track phantom. So um, again, you know, we're going to have uh, free programs at all the different branches. Uh, I'm going to be, you know, doing, um, you know, various things on my socials throughout the day that day. Uh, if there's any track changes or anything else that's going on, we'll want to let people know. Uh, it's really important to kind of do some research to see what's going on with these horses because some of the things that you might be seeing is the fact that the race is a little bit longer than what they've seen in, in the past, uh, sure. like we just talked about. The other thing is jockey changes. Uh, I'll give you an example. So the 15 is a long shot, domestic product. He's got Irad Ortiz Jr. on his back. A great jockey, no doubt. But Arad has never raced on his back. He's had Tyler Gaffleone for his last two races where he finished first and second. Well, Tyler's not going to be on him because Tyler's on a different horse. So it's 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 very interesting to kind of see, you know, where these different horses and where these jockeys kind of fall. The number 19 Resilience, who's a 20 to 1, somebody that a lot of people are actually taking a look at because, again, he's got a speed figure over 100 and is a good horse coming in first in the Wood Memorial. New York's um, automatic bid entry, if you will, into the Kentucky Derby. But John Velasquez was on the back for his last three races. Now he's going to have Junior Alvarado. Again, not a bad jock, great jock, but not John Velasquez. Not the guy who's got him to victory lane, so to speak, in you know these races. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, he's on my wall too. Yeah, I was going to say, and there's no rich strike in this probably, right? Because it's 50 to 1 to get the best one, but society man at 20, right? I mean, it, it, it's probably still not that far from you know a rich strike level of upset. Oh, right. Yeah. If you had, and, and here's something else that's interesting, Mike. So when I started kind of really paying attention to horse racing, I started working here in 07, but I didn't become the director of marketing for OTB and Batavia Downs until 2010. So for the first three years of my life here at Batavia Downs, I wasn't really involved with the OTB so much. It was more so on the gaming side of things. So I really started paying attention more in 2010 and 2011. And of course, 2011 was Animal Kingdom. Absolutely. So from, from there, it was really exciting to kind of see where it went. So in that time frame, it was kind of like favorite, not favorite, favorite, not favorite. Well, we had a run. Um, that ended, I want to say, in, it might have been the year after Animal Kingdom had started, and I think it ended in 2018, where the favorite won for like five races in a row, five yeah. derbies in a row. Yes. But I will tell you, listen to these days for the last five years, Country House, Authentic, uh, Medina Spirit, who of course was later DQ'd, Rich Strike, as you mentioned, and then last year, Mage, all those horses were at least 13 to 1, not the favorites. Right. So we haven't had a favorite win in a long time, which, and I don't know if they'll go off as co-favorite, so to speak. And, of course, if one of them is not the co-favorite uh, and is second choice and wins, they won't count as the favorite winning. But I, I think we might be due, Mike, to see one of the horses that everyone thinks is the horse win this race. So we'll see. Yeah, I mean, during that stretch, it was, you know, Animal Kingdom. It was California Chrome. It was Pharaoh. Right. It was all those great horses. Pharaoh, right. You know, you could argue being the second best of all time. Um, awesome stuff. In closing, last minute or so, <clears throat> give people, hey, Western OTB, they're open early on Saturdays, open mm -hmm. uh, 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 on Saturday morning. Batavia Downs Gaming, obviously, stay and play, concerts, uh, Thurman's Restaurant. You guys have yeah. so much going on there. Obviously, you can watch the races, events, and then Derby at night, of course, on Saturday. Rope it all together here and push them both, man. Sure. So so Friday, of course, is advanced wager at your local OTB branch or here at Batavia Downs. The branches do open early. I want to say they're either 10 or 1030. Some of them are different ones. You can check out our website, westernotb.com. Go there anyway. Of course, if you click on the locations tab at the top, you'll be able to see the location nearest you. If you can't make it out to a branch, it's going to be, you know, kind of nice out depending on where you are in New York uh, and you can't make it out. BataviaBets.com is there for you all the time. You can bet on Hong Kong racing at two in the morning. You can do all kinds of things on Batavia Bets. So get on there and you can make your wagers on Batavia Bets. If you want to join me here and be wearing my yellow suit with the red roses, it's going to be Oh, you're giving it away. Okay. Yeah. Well, I wear it every year, but yeah. Oh. <laughs> you, can, you can see me out here on that Kentucky Derby Day uh, on that day. Our Derby Gala is sold out. It's been sold out for weeks. It's one of the hottest tickets in town. Uh, but we do have the Derby Lunch Special, which, get this, Mike, it's unbelievable. For 30 bucks, you get $25 in free play. You get a wager on the Derby, and then you also get lunch, and you get a free program. So oh. it's like you're basically eating for free with all the free play you get right. back. 
Last year, we sold over 600 of those. That opens at 1130 and goes all the way up until, I think, 6 o'clock. We let everybody stay in our big Park Place Event Center to wow. watch the races on the big screen. You can wager on all the Churchill races that are going on that day. Other money to be made, Mike, on, on Kentucky Derby Day because there's other great races that are going on before the big one, of course. And, uh, yeah, you know, BataviaConcerts.com is the website to check out the links for all of our summer concerts. 38 Specials coming. Smash Mouth is going to be here. we got some great tribute acts. we got a Tom Petty tribute. Fleetwood Mac, we've got Jimmy Buffett, uh, we've got um, uh, the lead singer of Boston's coming, along with a guy who used to play in Chicago, so they're going to play all of Boston Chicago's music, Clay Walker for you uh, country folks, uh, are gonna he's going to be out here, so check it all out on uh, BataviaConscious.com, we've got events surrounding the Preakness and the Belmont too, tacos and tequila, and of course our big bourbon fest, so there's always something going on in Batavia, and no matter where you're listening to us from, here in New York State, just a couple hour drive. And as you mentioned, we got the hotel on site. So as long as we got hotel rooms, uh, you can make a night of it and just enjoy a couple of days here at Batavia Downs. Yeah, no doubt about that. BataviaDownsGaming.com and get to your uh, Western OTBs and nearby places as well throughout the state of New York, in Western New York, et cetera. And follow Ryan on Twitter. He's an amazing follow at RyanH7681 on X. And that unbelievable deal that you talked about. I mean, talk about anti-inflation, huh? That deal. My yeah. Well, <laughs> what it's, about you? it's a step back in time here at Batavia Downs. We're giving you value for your money, that's for sure. Seriously, man. Batavia Downs Gaming, Western OTV, proud ML Sports Platter sponsors, Ryan Hassenauer. You are the best. We're going to be doing this throughout the Triple Crown season. Really enjoy our chats and uh, can't wait for the Derby, my friend. Take care. Sounds good, man. Good luck.